Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at congruence. So you might notice there's a slightly different setup than I normally have. Uh, that's because I'm doing this one from home. Um, shouldn't be a problem though, so let's crack on. So congruence is a relatively easy concept. Uh, if we say that shapes are congruent, it means that they are exactly the same shape. Okay, so all the angles are the same, all the sides are the same. You could rotate the shape or reflect the shape or anything like that, it's absolutely fine. But as long as the size, so the sides and the angles are all the same, we say the shapes are congruent. So here's a quick little example here for you. This rectangle here is three by four. This one here is three by four. Obviously being a rectangle, all of the angles will be 90 degrees. And because they're rectangles, obviously the opposite sides are the same as well. Same with this one. Okay, so we'd say that these two shapes are congruent. I think it's worth just mentioning the difference between congruency and similarity, because this is where people generally get confused. So congruent shapes, angles, size exactly the same. Similar shapes have the same angles, but they are an enlargement of each other. So if you look at this one here, we have a three by four, if we double both the sides, six and eight, we would say that these two shapes are similar because it's just an enlargement, or this shape here is just an enlargement of this shape. Okay, so they're not congruent because their sides are different, okay, but they are similar because it's just an enlargement. So that's the difference between similar shapes and congruent shapes. Congruent, exactly the same. Similar shapes have the same angles and they're just enlargements of each other. So let's have a look at this one as well. So I've got a right angle triangle here, three and three. This one here as well, it's just to illustrate the point, if you rotate it, it doesn't make a difference, they're still congruent. 90 degree angle, three by three. I didn't put this side on there, I'm making it up. Let's just call it five as well. Okay, so if it's a rotation or reflection, doesn't matter. As long as all the sides and all the angles are the same, they are congruent. Exactly the same thing here, just another example of a similar shape. So this one here to this one here, three by three, nine by nine, it's just an enlargement of scale factor three. All the angles would be the same though. So that's just the difference between congruence and cell congruent shapes and similar shapes. It does get ever so slightly trickier. And that's when we look at uh, triangles. So there are four rules that will help us to prove congruency between triangles. Let's start with the first one. So the purpose of having the rules is to have or to find the minimum amount of information that will prove two shapes are congruent. So if I just go back to this one, you know, if I know all the sides and I know all the angles of both shapes, very easy, they're exactly the same. So what these rules do is they say, how little information do we need to prove that they are congruent? So this is what we're gonna have a look at now. The first rule is probably the easiest rule, is side, 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 shortened by SSS. If you know all three sides and they are the same, the shapes are congruent. So I've got some examples here. This is the one that we're gonna look at and we're going to find which one of these is congruent to this side, uh, this triangle here. Okay, there's only works for triangles, these rules, and this will be very similar sort of thing that you could have in the exam. So we'll say which shape is congruent to this one. So I've been given all three sides, so I'll just have a look. This one here is similar because it's 5, 10, 3.5, 7, 6, and 12. So that's just doubled, so that's similar but not congruent, so that one's out. This one here... I have 3.5, cool. I have five, excellent. But this one is a four and this one is a six, so the size there are not all the same, but very, very close. And this one here, six, five, 3.5, that's the one that I want. So these two shapes are congruent because all three sides are exactly the same. So that's the first rule, okay? Just very quickly here, if you know all the angles, that's not enough because if I just very very quickly what well, I can do on this one because similar shapes have all the same angles these angles here 
are all the same. So if you know all the angles, that does not prove congruency because it could be an enlargement of each other. But definitely side, side, side will prove it. If you don't believe me, try and draw that triangle any different to that, okay, or that one. Okay, that's the first rule and the easiest one to spot, all three sides. The next one is SAS, which is side angle side. So if you know two sides and importantly the angle in between them must be in between them, that's why it's SAS. Okay, so side, the angle, another side. Okay, then again the two triangles will be congruent, will be exactly the same. So let's have a look. So which one is congruent to this one here? I've got 5.5 and 7, so I have my two sides. When I look at the angles, they're different. So that's not good enough. This one here, again, I've got 5.5, excellent. I've got 7, excellent. And I even have 30, which is really cool, looking very promising. However, it needs to be the angle in between the two sides. So it would be that one that needed to be 30. So that one is not congruent to that. Which means we're left this one, and we don't have the angle 30. So this brings me on to my next point. Sometimes you might need to work out a missing angle. So let's do that. If I add up the two angles that I have, so 80 and 70, that gives me 150. And remember our triangles add up to 180 degrees. So the angles inside a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if I take away the two that I have, I'm left with 30 degrees, in which case these two are congruent because I have 7 and my 5.5 and the angle in between them is 30. So these two here would be congruent. Okay, it's so just a little hint there, you might need to work out a missing angle. Sometimes with these types of questions you might have to work out a missing length, but we'll talk about that with the last rule. Okay, so. SAS side, angle side, where the angle is in between the two sides. If you can spot that, those two triangles are congruent. Third one is S, sorry, is ASA, so angle side angle. Now you might think the side has to be between the two angles, and that is definitely one possibility, but in this case, you can have any side and any two angles. It's not specific like the other one. The other one, you had to have the angle in between the two sides. This one, as long as you have a side and two angles, it's absolutely fine. So let's have a look. Here's the triangle, and here's my three possibilities. Which one is congruent to that? So there's my side, and I have a 40 and a 60 degree angle. So let's have a look at this one. I have a 40, I have my eight, that's 100. But that's not a problem, let's just double check that it's not. So 100 plus 40 is 140, so 180, because all the angles add up to 180, take away 140 is 40, that one is 40. It's actually a very, very poorly, not to scale drawn um, isosceles triangle there. But because that's not 60, that one's out. So we did have to work out the missing angle there, just to double check that didn't work. This one here, I've got my two angles, 40 and 60, so that's cool. But my side is 7, so that one's out. Which leaves us with this one. So I have my side 8, I have an angle 40, I have an angle 60. It's exactly what I want. Notice that it isn't an angle side angle. It doesn't matter which two angles you have as long as they are the two same angles and the side, absolutely fine. Okay, so it's very easy to get that one and the previous one mixed up. So just be very careful. Any two angles with a side, absolutely fine. With the other one, has to be side, angle, side. Okay, it's just a little thing to try and remember there. Okay, that's the third rule to prove that triangles are congruent. And the last one here which is RHS, so it's a right angle triangle and you need to know the hypotenuse and one of the sides. So if you've done your Pythagoras already, you'll know what the hypotenuse is. It's really simple, it is the longest side. 
so long side here, and it's always opposite the 90 degrees. Okay, so the hypotenuse is always the longest side of the triangle, and if that's a little bit hard to spot, it's always the side that's opposite the right angle. Okay, so this rule here, if it's a right angle triangle, you know the hypotenuse, the longest side, and you know one of the shorter sides. Again, that is a rule that will prove that two triangles are congruent. So this is where you might have to work out a missing length using Pythagoras if the uh, examiners are feeling particularly mean. So just bear that in mind, right angle triangle, you might need to do a little bit of Pythagoras or even trig if they really want to lay it on a bit thick. But I haven't done that, I've just done the basics. So that's a right angle triangle. So we've got that one sorted. I've got the hypotenuse, which is eight, which is the same as this one. And I've got my side here and I've got my side here. So that one, straight away, without even thinking about it, those ones are congruent. Right angle, got the hypotenuse, and a shorter side, those two are congruent. Let's just have a very quick look at these two though, just to prove why they're not, and the points that I'm going to raise with this one. Right angle triangle, not a problem. Don't know the hypotenuse. Although this side is eight, okay, you don't know the hypotenuse. Remember, it's the longest side, and it's the side opposite the 90. So that one's out because we don't know the hypotenuse. This one here looks quite good. Six and an eight, six and an eight. That one looks like it's the hypotenuse because it's opposite that, but that is not 90. So it's not a right angle triangle. If it's not a right angle triangle, I can't use this rule. And that's the last one, guys. So just a few things to, to recap. I'll just go back through them just so you've got them. So we've got the right angle, hypotenuse and side. That will prove that two triangles are congruent. We've got angle side angle, where it can be any side and any two angles. We have our side angle side, where it must be the angle in between two sides. Don't forget, you might need to work out the missing angle to help you complete that. And the uh, last one, easiest one here, if you know all three sides, again, that proves that the two triangles are congruent. They are exactly the same. Right, so hopefully that uh, helps you with congruent triangles and congruent shapes in general. Thanks for watching.